Hey everybody! Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, we're writing our first poem, I guess. Um, so we have to pick like our favorite person, I guess. And we're writing poems, so what's that one? Oh, she liked that one. Uh, that one. <laughs> uh, that one. That one. Massacre. Sure. <laughs> uh, death. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um, determination. Uh, Doki Doki. Uh, uh, that one. Um, this one. <laughs> this one. That one. No, this dark. <laughs> um, that one. God, she really likes everything that I like. <laughs> Suicide! No. Uh... I don't know. That one. <laughs> Cheeks. <laughs> Cheeks. Um... Journey. Uh... That one. God, you really like everything. But I'm feather. Um. Explode. Uh. Waterfall. Okay. I guess that's where we go. Hi again, Sam. Glad to see you didn't run on away on us. Haha. -ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept to my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Sam. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst in the literature when you're not even accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. So you already told me that you didn't even want to join the club this year. Join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then we won't, you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Mmm! <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Sam always has his best as long as he's having fun. <laughs> he helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking and cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Sam can be good friends, too. Um, Sayori. Hmm? Dot dot. As usual, Sayori, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? What, wait, Sayori, at me? Uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Uh, never mind. <laughs> Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what did I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> you never think! <laughs> uh, I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is, is that so? Yeah, it won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it could keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted to. The, this is... How's this girl accidentally being so cute. She even picked out a book she thinks I'd like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. 
Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around the closet. <laughs> I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. Looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. Dot dot dot. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I'm out of this, sensing her I made her feel uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... Is that the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious on how come you have two copies of the same book. Ah, uh, well, I stopped by the bookstore yesterday and, uh... It's not what I meant. I mean... Just happened to buy two of them. Oh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What is it about, anyways? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter who, what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of, kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn, that dark turn came from nowhere. Ha ha. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Sam? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri is into these things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just the, those kind of stories. They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they've made out to be... Peek. You cannot scream while I'm recording. They're made out to be one naive for, one, for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fulfill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. I'm so sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I'm talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. Must you come in here while I'm recording? Fucking That's my shitty textbook! Mm -hmm. Yay! Wow, that is trash. Okay. Get out of here, Chris. Sorry, guys. My, uh, textbooks just came in from college. Uh, okay. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah. That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, huh? You, you don't have to. Uh -huh, what are you saying? A moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Dot, dot, dot. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I put into my bag. Alright, is it fine that I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start reading the pro prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. 
as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just... Yuri, you really apolo apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. You did it again! I mean... Haha. -ha. Here. This should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Ah. I suppose so. Yuri timid timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after I flip to her side. But holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. As if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? Uh, to turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Oh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning the page almost feels like an intimate exchange, my thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character some somewhat reminds me of you. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more of... Sure, she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she's also second guesses a lot of things that she says and does. Like, she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your own mannerisms. I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Sam, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Oh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really don't know how you were self con I didn't know you were that self-conscious of that sort of thing. Dot, dot, dot. I guess I'm more, I'm more meant to be kind of cute. Oh, okay. What are you saying all of a sudden? I, okay, everyone. Uh, I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah! Oh. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thong. Ow! <laughs> alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have to be... I don't, I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's a good reasoning. In that case, I feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. <laughs> I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find somebody to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loot sleeve from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri are reluctantly compliant as well. Reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Probably... Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her own opinion, to be fair. Dot dot dot. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? Did I just say that out loud? Yuri covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. 
You, he's gonna hate, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh, that's, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates that you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Oh, that's a huge accomplishment, a huge accomplishment coming from you. This is actually the first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly and then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um, Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words of the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there were specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic manner. And if they form fit the two together, the end result is that both style and expressiveness as are weakened. Once Yuri, find her, Yuri, once Yuri finds her train of thought as... The dog is barking, I'm so sorry. It's as her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering, stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing, even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone in this club gives you valuable, ba valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri j is apologizing to herself, me, or Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dream dreamily, as if it's a rare op opportunity for her. Which is kind of funny. After all, this isn't supposed to be- isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight I have withstood the test of time. The last, yet, replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air in the present of the living in the past. The light flickens. I flicker back. Okay. Dot dot dot. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all. But it took you time, a long time to read. Sorry, I can't read cursive that well. Ah, well, just don't read script very often. Exactly. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. I'm gonna go slap that dog. Right in the face. <laughs> it wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since this is the first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to di digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hoo <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Sam. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feeling, and experience in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining- Oh my god, Yuri, you talk way too much. <laughs> I haven't even thought of that. That's impressive, eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah. Oh, you know. I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Sam. Ah, me too. Alright guys, I'm gonna end the episode here, and I'm gonna go put a duct tape on my dog's mouth because he keeps barking. <laughs> uh, then, uh, I guess I'll see you guys next episode then. Thanks for watching! Bye!